Zeitverschiebungen.
francs is approximately 142.80 US dollar. Pakistan exported to Philippines during the year 2021 is around worth 114.198 US million dollar. Import of Pakistan from Philippines during 2021 worth 28.604 million US dollar. Major items, products, exports from Gujarat to Philippines is Himalayan, salt, lamp, and the uh, Major exports are about these machineries, uh, food items, pharmaceuticals, and health care products, textile, and extra. Uh, as about cities, uh, known by metal, metal products, and more aluminium, and uh, we used to sell copper and all these things, kitchenware and cutlery, chemicals, winter items, cosmetic items. The middle import items from Philippines to Pakistan are machinery, vehicles, other than railway, tramway, rolling stock, and parts, and accessories, mechanical appliances, clock, and watches, parts, aircraft, spacecraft, and parts, food items, vegetable fruit, nuts, oil seeds, and uh, other fruits, textile, metal, chemicals, and other rubber and articles, paper, and paper articles. Paper pulp or paper of paper boards. Next, export potential of Pakistan to Philippines. The product with greatest export potential from Pakistan to Philippines are uh, uh, undenatured ethyl alcohol, semi made or fully made rice, fruit, uh, citrus food, fresh and dried, semi made or wholly made rice shows the largest absolute difference between potential and actual export in value terms, leaving room to realize additional export worth US uh, 18 million dollars. Export potential for Philippines to Pakistan. The product with greater export potential for Philippines to Pakistan are uh, coconut, waste and scrap, iron steel, smart car, electronic and integrated circuits, LED lamps, and these kitter coconut shows the largest output difference between potential and actual export in value terms. Leaving room to India relies additional export worth 5.2 billion US dollar. It is in need of the R to promote trade activities between Bihar and General and Pakistan in particular and your country. Frequent exchange of trade delegations facilitate B2B contacts, organizing exhibition country and participation of businessmen then on reciprocal basis could be another effective way to improve bilateral trade and investment in US, Pakistan and Philippines. Similarly, exchange of visit of the top executive countries usually would have tremendous impact in cementing and expanding economic relationship among us. And uh, now I request you to please identify the area of cooperation for the promotion of bilateral trade between Bhutan and Philippines. We shall appreciate your suggestions, viewers, in this regard. We show you our best position. Thank you very much. Please welcome uh, Honorable Ms. Maria Nikis. Mr. Soib Bhatt, uh, members of the Gujarwala Chamber of Commerce and Industry, good afternoon. Thank you very much for um, allowing us to be present this afternoon. As uh, you have seen from the presentation of uh, President Bhatt, you can see that there has been a very minimal trade between the Philippines and uh, Pakistan. However, we feel that uh, there is much that we can offer each other. Uh, uh, as we have gone around this morning, uh, we see that uh, Gujarwala produces ceramics for, uh, and uh, the real estate uh, market actually in the Philippines has not experienced a bubble. It has always been going up 
and we also have our um, we op we also have our uh, residential and commercial buildings going on. But our source of our source of materials for co construction materials have been China. But as I have seen here with my own eyes, I see that the quality of products that are here in Richard Wada are of international standard. I've only been to two companies actually, Sonex and Masters. But the quality is really very good. And uh, in fact, it is comparable to the products that the Philippines import from, uh, from Europe. Because we also, you know, uh, Europe has a, shall we say, a shine by having the name, you know, being from Europe. But actually, the quality is very much comparative. And I suppose that the pricing is, uh, the, the pricing difference would really be, you know, to the advantage of Pakistan. Uh, at this moment, I could not, uh, I still do not, uh, we, we have been actually exploring ways for investments, but, uh, the present, from my present um, exploration, I believe that trade can be the beginning of a more vibrant exchange between the Philippines and uh, and Pakistan. Your metallurgy, metallurgy is also very good. In fact, uh, when I was here 14 years ago, Pakistan was importing scrap metal from the Philippines. And uh, although we missed going to the, what's this? Yes, that, yes. That factory where uh, you separate the metals from each other. Yeah, uh, you have upgraded actually the, the materials that, you know, you import from around the world from scrap metal. That's why uh, your production is uh, good but at the same time, the pricing is competitive. Uh, we look forward to increasing, hopefully, from, from our side, we look forward to more interaction and more business from uh, Pakistan, and specifically the general. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Highness Barriakins. Thank you very much for acknowledging the quality the products have been made in my uh, city. Thank you very much for visiting in factories. I hope that uh, we will be playing trade and uh, thanks to all countries. Uh, I would like to introduce my brother, there's Harun Salbidasa. This is uh, from Canada, we will be talking about. Uh, I will uh, ask him to welcome you or if you want to say something. Thank you for your answer. Um, thank you very much for coming to the Governor Chamber of Commerce and uh, uh, giving us a chance to talk about hospitality. Uh, we, we are importing a metal scrap from all over the world and uh, Pakistan. If, uh, particularly Gujarawala is the biggest recycling city in the We have been importing uh, motors, compressors, cables, iron and steel, united uh, from all over the world to Pakistan and we are recycling the metals in Pakistan. And we are also exporting the ingots in the form of uh, ingots, the copper ingots and in the form of uh, aluminum ingots to China right now. So, um, in Gujarawala, we are making different kinds of aluminum ingots, different alloys, which are using different uh, sort of manufacturing in aluminum transmission and in Indian transmission. It's used as a raw material for Indian transmission. It is being exported from Pakistan to China right now. So, we are importing 
the raw material in the form of uh, low-grade copper items and new year processing. So it's extracting the copper and the aluminum from low-grade items and uh, doing the valuation and exporting it to China right now. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, uh, we have been importing this crap from uh, Philippines, but I, I don't know anyone in my circle who has been importing any kind of scrap from Philippines. But uh, there is a possibility, a chance that uh, Pakistan can import this kind of scrap from Philippines because Pakistan market is very much competitive and the, the Gujarawala is basically called the city of metal that you have um, uh, seen in this uh, uh, presentation. So uh, I think there is uh, much more possibility for Pakistan and Philippines to do a bilateral trade between both countries. So we can also import and we can also export uh, some kind of metal sales and means of uh, some kind of alloys which are made in uh, Philippines. We can make it in Pakistan and we are ex exporting it. Uh, expo we can export it to Philippines as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aisha. Chairman 
with through your embassy to the chambers of your country. And they must have the linkage to know the each other's requirements. And this should be watched by the embassy of Pakistan over here and Philippines over here. So this kind of setup is needed to promote the business. Otherwise, the individual meetings and individual people, if they go and come, that will not be that fruitful. If we do it at collective matter, at collective level, collective level like chambers, embassies, and everything. So I think better to appoint some focal person for the vision of the chamber in Shurabas to keep this contact for the future, more programs, more introductions to your industry and to our industry. I think this sort of arrangement should be there. Yeah, we are producing, uh, we, we are basically Maize processes, we produce starches, glucose, protein, these are all organic products. We normally, uh, we, we produce about uh, 100 tons per day our capacity is, and our main uh, market is Afghanistan and uh, Middle East <coughs> and in Pakistan. Uh, the other other uh, products which we made in the under our group, that is cutlery and uh, stainless steel cutlery and uh, utensils, stainless steel utensils and removed utensils. These are our products. Thank you. Thank you. You are, you are right uh, by saying that uh, the, <coughs> the embassy should be the, shall we say, the liaison between the Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines and the Gujanwala Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the embassy, actually, the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines realizes the importance of uh, you know, economics also in the development of uh, relations between countries. That is why we have a we have an economic section also in our embassy. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that while in the years past uh, there was a more vibrant interaction between Pakistan and the Philippines. It seems that at, at the present time, um, there is a, a lack of awareness from the Philippines also about Pakistan and uh, Pakistan about the Philippines, which is evident in the low, very low uh, trade that we have between our two countries. Uh, as a part of the embassy, that is our goal, to be able to, you know, link up. And hopefully we can do that. Because uh, that is true, that uh, what you have been saying, that, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of diplomats come, and then they go, and then nothing happens. But I hope that uh, we can, uh, from our side, we will be able to work something out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I would like to add to what Maria uh, just said. Is it, um, we are forming a delegation to the Philippines and we would welcome the members of the uh, Ujjawala Chamber of Commerce who are interested in promoting their products and uh, exploring the Philippines market uh, to join us. Uh, having said that, we had one uh, the last uh, delegation that we took to Philippines included pharmaceutical products. The way we go about it is we 
uh, gather uh, interested parties from the relevant sector, that was pharmaceutical sector, and then we took them to the, to the Philippines and we made sure that they do their market research and after uh, and we facilitated that research because you have to, at the end of the day, you have to see what the market is like before you can come and we can uh, and analyze what uh, sort of competition your product is going to face in that market. So that was essential. And I just quote an example for you that the Panadol tablets, 10 tablets of Panadol, which may cost about 50 rupees in Pakistan, were approximately about 1500 rupees worth in the Philippines. So for the pharmaceutical sector, it was um, a very lucrative market and was um, focusing. Uh, to get, enter those markets. Some of the players have already entered the market and it's open to them. But if, if you ask me, like uh, this morning we were discussing with Mr. Farouk uh, about uh, uh, the possibility of importing scrap material from the Philippines, and he was open to the idea. So he needs to see people in the scrap industry or recycling industry need to see firsthand what the market is like. They have to do their own work. How much, how, uh, how feasible would that be to bring into Pakistan and then to eventually convert it into a long period for the industry which is spread between Gujarawala and uh, neighboring cities. Similarly, for um, cutlery and uh, agriculture uh, products, we would encourage you to, and other industries that uh, may be interested as we go along, uh, we would encourage you to try our, our team that we uh, I cannot say uh, about our predecessors, but I can show you that under the leadership of Madam Maria Agnes Cervantes, she uh, has a very clear goal, and that is to promote bilateral trade between Philippines and Pakistan. And uh, that is why this is our second visit within the last two months. And we are very uh, uh, concerned and, uh, act, uh, and uh, enthusiastic to promote the, the linkages between the European Chamber of Commerce and Kujanawala Chamber of Commerce. So, and P2P uh, contacts between the two uh, businesses. So, with this, I will uh, close here. And uh, you're more, all of you are more than welcome to uh, contact us and join us. So, and we will be more than happy to connect you with uh, your counterpart and your interested parties in the Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. Uh, I have our member of the Dean of Warriors, Congratulations, you, Shazad Nawaz Sahib. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, uh, we warmly welcome to Ms. Maria here, which was member. Ma'am, uh, actually I am exporter of Himalayan salt, Himalayan pink salt from Pakistan. Uh, since 10 years, we exporting the Himalayan pink salt to Philippines. But uh, we have a vast range of Himalayan pink salt products, industrial salt, salt room tiles, and pink salt for cooking salt and salt lamps and many more items in pink salt and there is a huge opportunity in Philippines to explore our thoughts in the market of the Philippines. We request please arrange some expo or uh, exhibitions there to uh, present our thoughts there. Only we request for you. Thank you very much. Actually, sir, the Philippines usually holds uh, two exhibitions uh, every year in March and uh, October. No. Yeah, a food expo. Yes. Uh, only once, not once a year, but yeah, in March, yes. So uh, we will uh, we will take note of uh, your request. And uh, I suppose that after this formal meeting, then we can exchange uh, contact numbers mm -hmm. so that we can send you the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a member, member with me, Sayyid Badi, the deputy here.
discussion. So I was not planning. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for uh, giving me the opportunity. And go uh, well, sir. Uh, Our Excellency Maria, Ambassador Maria. I would love to ask you what possibilities and the opportunities in the field of uh, education. And uh, we do want to collaborate with some Philippinian universities like uh, student exchange programs and uh, the faculty as well as the research exchange program. And uh, also we are seeking some emerging technologies with some uh, Philippine universities like artificial intelligence and you know, some cloud computing, IR 4.0 and uh, uh, blockchain as well. In the in the late or early 80s, uh, we have a more vibrant exchange in the field of education. And in fact, Dr. Ibrahim here has been uh, has gone to the Philippines to study in one of the universities. Um, in the at the present time, we are looking forward to reviving this area of exchange between Pakistan and the Philippines because uh, Pakistan has the British uh, style of education. But when it comes to the tertiary level, um, we are actually, we have been uh, working on the possibility of um, in the field of medicine where uh, a lot of uh, universities in the Philippines can offer uh, medical uh, degrees. No? Uh, we, we look forward to reviving this kind of uh, exchange between us. Uh, so, But I, I, I'm not so sure about the fields of engineering, so I'm going to give the floor to the uh, third secretary. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you very much for your question. It's actually very timely. I know that a few years ago, uh, the Philippines has been receiving a lot of business process outsourcing, and mainly it was focused on voice. So you have a lot of the calls, the contact centers, service centers in the Philippines. Now it's transitioning to more of the, what they call non-voice and back office operations. So you have accounting, and then you have cloud computing, and blockchain. And recently, we ventured into AI. Uh, I think there are seven levels of AI. I think we're still at uh, levels uh, two or three. But uh, we have a lot of like a small scale developers. And the gaming industry is also a big thing there. The gaming industry. And uh, just to note, uh, if you know the company Pixar, some of their uh, programmers are Filipinos, and some of their jobs are actually outsourced to Philippine companies. So there's a lot of potential for collaboration in that field, especially with regard to uh, blockchain in itself. So definitely, uh, if you are quite interested in that, uh, I, I'm not sure what's the status right now, but the Department of Trade and Industry has been working on a creative industries roadmap, and that includes uh, IT business process management. So definitely, uh, we'll Try to get some information on that. And if you're very interested, uh, you can actually join the delegation and see for yourself uh, which kinds of companies you would like to be with Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to introduce Ms. Saima Ali, she's the deputy director from Kirk University. Saw, she's also here. And uh, Aruj Sikander, assistant manager, I would like to ask for Simon to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And a very warm welcome to Her Excellency. I will continue the same thing. Uh, let me introduce uh, briefly my university. That is an emerging underpinning world. And uh, we are very much focused on uh, converting knowledge into practical experience. Uh, and the internationalization is one of the core of the university. Uh, we have established an international office in 2017, and since then we are taking different groups of the students to different parts of the world.
to our partner universities like in US, in UK, uh, Europe, Turkey, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, mm -hmm. and some other parts of the world for the exchange programs. Like what they do, they uh, cover some of the curriculum uh, in the form of academics, somewhere they do internships, social integration programs, one of our strengths. They do social internship there, they do corporate internship there, they, they do their projects there, family or research projects there, they cover some of the courses there, and so on and so forth. And we have very strong collaborations in terms of the joint research and uh, conferences. We have the different, like three to four conferences during COVID with the UK and Turkey, and they were really successful. So joint dialogue is one of the areas we can look into. These student and faculty exchange programs, both virtual and physical. Physical won't be very difficult when it comes to Philippines. I believe it's not very expensive. Uh, so we can look into the, those things as well. We welcome the students, the faculty from Philippines as well for their academics, for their industry. Industry in front of you, they can come here, we will arrange their internships here, our faculty, they will supervise them. You have uh, got the look of the industry here. And they can do uh, social internship programs, they can cover some of their courses here, like one semester exchange, after one year exchange, they can do under the MOUs. Uh, they can do their research work here. Her Excellency, uh, just to tell you that this is the heaven for this region. Golden Triangle is the heaven for the researchers. This is not only the industrial hub, but the agricultural hub as well. So people, they can come here, they can do their research here. This is still an untaped area. So we uh, welcome them whenever they will come. Either that is the student, that is the faculty, that is the researcher, and if they want to come, yes, they are most welcome. University is here. This is the city's university, we always call that, city university. Um, yes, uh, and we can uh, explore the areas uh, for the social sciences, psychology, sociology, fashion, textile, international relations, political science, any area of business, any area of technology, um, even home economics, home interior, cooking, every area you will find you will get here at the university. So we can explore those opportunities as well where we can collaborate mutually. Our students and faculty will be going to the Philippine universities and their students and faculty we can see here in the city. Uh, this is what we can definitely explore. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I just want to respond on the, on, on this. Uh, Philippines is 100% uh, English speaking country and the highest education ratio in the entire Asia. So, the, and the quality of the education is, the, in 1990, Philippines produced the first BS computer science gold medalist graduate of Pakistan, who is talking to you right now. So, <laughs> so you can compare the, the quality of education. Uh, we definitely have uh, a lot of uh, MIT and other renowned institutes and the universities. Uh, Mr. Father Sheikh has worked in the last year with the MOU with the Medical University. I just last month I did in Karachi uh, with the Engineering University, uh, MOU between Engineering University in Philippines and, and uh, the Ilmo University. We are signing another one with the Ikra University in Karachi again. Uh, so this is very much possible what you are saying. It's just the music and which we like to hear. Uh, if you just say specific that what area you're looking for, we're definitely gonna match this with the university. We will arrange all the uh, all the work with the with the thanks to the COVID and Zoom. Uh, we can do all the homework before even we go there. So we are here for 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 sure, and uh, we look forward to have this student exchange program because the students become ambassadors and ambassadors they become the future of the, the trade as well. So we definitely welcome and we are ready to go all the way where everybody wants us to take you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, a member here, Dr. Rachel Arthur, to one. You introduce yourself and ask yourself. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, welcome to Guyana Wala, Madam Lahia. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I belong to the Equator Army Industry. Uh, we are producing uh, the electrical fans, all type of electrical fans and wall clocks. 
So uh, I, might, I would like to make the part of your delegation. So, so please share the, your details of your delegation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody more to have a question? Thank you. I will uh, uh, love to introduce my brother, uh, uh, Senior Vice President here at GCCI, of RBU. You uh, will say a few words and then we will wind up this week. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving the opportunity. Her Highness, Ms. Marja and Mr. Winters, Mr. Father Shea, Dan Evan, Sumaira Bibi, I hope all are present, I'm sorry to be here today, uh, Mr. Haseeb Khan, uh, for coming all the way and giving us the honor to host you. For well, this very reason you are here, um, this is also famous in the hospitality also. And we, we always feel honored to host new friends. Thank you very much for coming all the way. And it has been a very useful session so far. And we are looking forward to have collaborations in the fields of trade, industry, medicine, uh, in the cultural uh, exchange, in the education, and beyond. And the one, uh, the key is that the continuity of this uh, dialogue and the continuity of the meeting between both the ends to have a favorable conclusion in the results. That is the only, I think, the path we should follow as my friend and the colleague, senior colleague mentioned that uh, people come and go. And finally, the, both the communities end up and stand alone by finding no competitor or rather not the competitor, but the collaboration between both ends. And hope this meeting will continue and we will uh, definitely find uh, the results beneficial for the both ends. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a presentation for you. We make the member Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again, ladies and gentlemen. Um,